Hello everyone, good afternoon, Jeroen is op hier, and in English today, so forgive me my bad pronunciation, but I'll do my best today. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know, Eris, here if I uh, really make stupid mistakes, then I can No, 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 no. Yeah? your English is great. You yeah, oh thanks, oh thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome, Rishi, to uh, Catch His Phones Live, also. And um, maybe uh, maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, like we do every week. We mm -hmm. talk about Power BI, we talk about stuff related to Power BI. Uh, this is episode 51 for the people who are new. We do this every Thursday, mostly in Dutch, but sometimes also in English, if the guest uh, deserves it, and Rishi deserves that. So, uh, <laughs> well, so, for the English uh, people, he can't speak any other languages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Rishi, you are a, a group manager of Afanaat. What, what, yep. what do you do as a group manager? Yep. So, um, I work as, yes, yeah, so we work as part of a team. So, it used to be Altius. So, I joined Altius about four years ago. So, so my background is actually as an accountant. Um, I started my career at Deloitte after university. I did philosophy and economics at university. Mm -hmm. um, joined Deloitte, did tax software consulting there, um, and then moved, moved into financial services. So, did a bit at HSBC, Barclays, and KPMG financial modeling. So, I was there for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. co combining my kind of technical with the accounting side and then about four years ago just over four years ago moved to Altius um, so a data and AI consultancy focused on the kind of Microsoft stack and looking at data science data platform and obviously I was very focused on Power BI coming in it from yeah. from the Excel angle and things like that and then um, I've been there for you say just over four years we got acquired by Avanard um, yeah. so we moved over officially at the start of this year um, yeah. And my main my main area of focus is working on the kind of self service architecture. So I've just been working with a couple of clients recently on you know quite big clients where you know they've got you know ten thousand e five licenses with Power BI mm. Pro, wow. and so everyone's publishing things to different workspaces, and there's not real yeah. any governance yeah. or administration. So thinking about how to use things like data flows, shared data sets, and and things like that. Cool. Um, so that's yeah, that's my maybe, maybe uh, yeah, very interesting. Maybe we touch upon that later. If you're watching, if you have questions, eh, and, and maybe you're new to this cat response live, we try to make it as interactive as possible. So we share this, eh, we, we broadcast this on LinkedIn and YouTube. If you leave a comment, I see it popping up uh, on my right hand side, and I can maybe yeah uh, add your comment or question eh, on the topic uh, that we're discussing today. So I see that uh, Rick is uh, watching. Hello, Rick. And Fernando, and uh, not of no, oh, hey, Fernando. Times Fernando, yeah. you know him. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. so good that you're watching. And uh, of course, if you like this, give thumbs up. But yeah, you have to get started first. So yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, from Saint, Pe Saint Petersburg, uh, Florida. Oh, nice, nice service. Right. Nice uh, to meet you. Yeah, I've never had a viewer from Florida. I think. <laughs> and from Mexico. Oh yeah, that's also oh, nice to share. These, to, these are all to, places we need to go to as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. Right, we need to go and. Yeah, Fernando, yeah. you're you're inviting us to Mexico, right, Fernando? And yep, yeah, hey. please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, so actually, some of these people popping up now are people actually involved in the Power Platform Finance community, actually, as well. Yeah, so, oh, um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll because that's, that. I, I yeah, because the topic the of end, today but. is indeed mm -hmm. uh, the Power Platform for financials. And, yep. and, and and yeah, it has two meanings, eh? because yeah, of course, the Microsoft Power Platform. What do you need as a finance professional? Yep. What are the skills you need? Eh? We're going to be talking about that. Uh, and you yourself, yeah, you also have a Power Platform, uh, eh? especially for this purpose. So we're going to be talking about both a little bit. And I'm going to share your screen now, uh, Rishi. Sure. Um, so to to show what we're going to cover today. So what will we cover today, uh, Rishi? So we're going to look at, I'm going to focus a bit on Power BI because I think that's that's where, you know, I think most people coming from Excel and I'm actually going to look at, you know, where the challenges might be with finance professionals today working with Excel and where we've got into the situation with it, with, with finance. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of look at actually where Power BI really fits in with that, what the kind of skills you need as a Power BI professional. So I'm going to look at some of those skills and show some examples. Um, and then I'll talk a bit about the PPF community. So as I say, being, being part of this community, um, you know, this is, I, I thought I'd combine my background as an accountant with, with my passion for Power BI. 
Ooh. and start to yeah. see how we can build out a community around it. I think it's a really important area, really interesting area. And there's been some really great reactions, um, mm -hmm. some people on this call, this call even as well. So hopefully, you know, that resonates with people clearly. So that's good. And that's what strikes me I'm now in the in the Power BI uh, domain for five years, these communities. <laughs> There's so many communities, uh, so many yeah. Yeah, sharing of knowledge. I really love that about, uh, Absolutely. about uh, working with Power BI. It's so cool. So why Power BI for finance? That's the first topic. Uh, yep. Yeah. So yeah, why, let's, why? oh yeah, so oh, yeah, this was sure. just a yeah. to me, yep. So yeah, yeah we've, we've sure. covered that already, but yeah, content, my background, so I'm MVP. So I do a lot of stuff with the community. Um, yeah. and um, and that's quite good. And then fast track yeah. recognized. And so the other the other community I run apart from Power Platform Finance. So this one is powerplatformfinance.com. So feel free to go and have a look at it. And then this one, Learn Data Insights, is about quizzes um, and courses for studying for Microsoft exams. So mm -hmm. DA 100 is the main one we've got up there, but we're building mm -hmm. some stuff for Azure. And we've got a little bit of Excel and Python, which we're also building up as well. So going down some of the data science things. Um, and actually what we're, what we're going yeah. to start doing potentially there is start you know, as I say, reaching out to a lot of the people. So we've had on, on the LDI, we've had 7,000 people sign up and wow. over 55,000 quiz attempts. So there's wow. there's a lot of interest in that as well. So cool. you know, we're, we're thinking of reaching out to those people and getting them also into kind of looking at who's interested in finance and, and who's interested in doing things like Azure and data science because yeah. There's, yeah. there's a growth journey with all of this. Yeah, it's a lot of data. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've started with a kind of really, really high level here around kind of, well, you know, financial reporting, where, where have we come to come from with it? And, you know, finance is one of those areas where, you know, there's a lot of domains where data is quite new or, you know, we haven't traditionally captured data in a lot of domains. Um, you know, I think, you know, when systems were designed 20, 30 years ago, a lot of these, or longer even, you know, data was not data was expensive to store, um, you know, process, and we did really store huge amounts of data. Now, obviously, we're in the situation where we store everything, can capture everything from our phones to IoT devices. But finance is almost a bit of an exception because, any original data that's ever been captured has always been financial data. And in fact, if you were going to capture anything, it would be financial data. I think the first records in existence were probably financial data, I think, if I remember correctly from Yeah. From, from I, 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 owe, I owe you probably. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> I owe you exactly. It was tax. I think it was tax actually. I think that was the that was the for land, lands and crops and things like that. So yeah. so finance data has been around for a long time and it's been, you know, structured, it's been in databases, there've been reporting systems for finance and ERPs for you know for for decades, um, and all of these things like SAP, IBM, Cognos, Hyperion, SQL Server reporting services. Um, but what the you know and the, these systems are great, right? Because you have those systems which store your data, centralized transactional data, and it runs reports. So you'll have a report that's generated every Monday morning, sent out to you know five thousand people, um, and you know they 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 were they were good for that for that need. But what the challenge was is they weren't very flexible or agile, right? So if you wanted to add new data into there or bring in new columns and tweak the reports, you'd have to go through a change request process and it might take months. Um, and so, you know, this is where you get this friction between finance teams and IT. So IT want to have everything centralized and everything goes through change request processes and all the rest of it. Um, and so what really happened is that, well, finance teams and, and you know, business teams in general said, well, do you know what? We've also got something that's the complete opposite end of the spectrum, which is Excel. It's completely flexible. It's completely agile. Um, and it doesn't have the security and the governance and the single version of truth, but actually it gives us all that flexibility. And so really this is where, you know, finance has really come to, to you know, in its four in Excel, because you, you've been able to create whatever we need to bring in data from loads of different places, you know, combine calculations together, show data alongside each other, perform calculations, everything we've been able to do in Excel, it's been kind of the lowest common denominator. And don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely love Excel, right? So Excel is what, you know, where I started my career, and it's this is not about Excel bashing at all, but no. there are challenges with working with Excel for financial reporting. So, you know, just to go through these at quite a high level, right? Performance is an issue once we start dealing with some, you know, some decent data volumes um, and complexity. And, you know, I don't know if you, have you seen you in some of the recent stuff in Excel with Lambda functions and let and a little dynamic, bit. dynamic yeah, to arrays. To be honest, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm not able to follow everything. But <laughs> e even the, yeah. even the, uh, because the vertical lookup is, of course, the most common yeah, one. Yeah. Yep, I yep. think still a lot of people don't know the X lookup. 
in in my uh, in my uh, yeah, in my area. And even yeah. that already could improve it a lot, probably uh, to make it much. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. know what about the performance. Whether uh, well, so this is yeah, the thing. Right? There's lots better. more complexity yeah. and things like this. So what people start to do is they start to use Excel like a database, and you start yeah. using it over hundreds of thousands of rows. And traditionally, with Excel, you have to put everything into one big table in order to analyze it, to do a pivot table on it, for example. So yeah. then you start ending up with these sheets that are really, really slow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yes, in theory, Excel can handle a million rows of data. If you try and put a million rows of data with Excel with some formulas against it, your machine will crash, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, there's some real challenges around kind of performance. And, you know, with all, even with all of these new Excel functions, and it gives you much more flexibility, like you could build an entire computer program now in Excel, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean you should, right? Because yeah. the challenge with all of this stuff then becomes maintainability. Yeah. You know, I, I have to laugh because a lot of people can relate, I see in the comments. <laughs> right. So people so yeah. people say, uh, I had, uh, Matthew says, I had to save my Excel models as binary yeah. documents to try to shrink their size. Otherwise Absolutely, I do. Yeah, it's a, yeah, Excel yeah. SP file format. Yeah, it's good format. Actually. And it's good, uh, good Sade says, also yeah. recognize very slow performance after 1 million. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say even before, before, yeah, yeah. dynamic yeah. arrays, dynamic arrays are great. So all of this stuff is great, but yeah, absolutely. You want to be able to have the maintainability, right? And, yeah. and the other challenge with Excel is is kind of what we're covering here. I'd say so the other thing is manual effort. I know there's VBA scripts to automate Excel, um, mm. but typically with finance reporting and things like that, you're doing lots of different cuts. Yeah, absolutely, Belinda, yeah. It's not a database, right? You're doing, yeah. you have to do lots of different cuts. So you have to bring your data in, you have to then um, do, do all of this with the, with the data database oh, sorry, with, with excel um yeah. so it's um, not a database Rishi. it's not a database, <laughs> not a database. sorry I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm already getting brainwashed um people think it is yeah yeah so so there's, yeah, there's, there's all these it. challenges yeah. and yeah. um and the other challenge the other side of that is also around sharing and collaboration right because mm -hmm. yes you can protect workbooks and worksheets but it's a bit of an all or nothing Right, you protect a workbook and someone has the password, they could get to it. You're not using their credentials to kind of see which rows of data they can see. You don't have this concept of very-level security uh, out of the box in traditional Excel. And at the I'm talking about traditional Excel here. Obviously, there's things like Power Pivot and Power Query as well, where you can mm -hmm. you can do things like this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you t sharing is basically done generally through files. So it's you know sending files, and then you end up with multiple versions of the truth, and you know lots yeah. of you know, if those numbers get updated, they're not reflected in those Excel files that you've sent around. And things like storytelling, you know, it's yeah. typically what people would do was take screenshots of graphs in Excel and put them into PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of kind of, you know, to, to try and build a narrative around there. But then you present a story back and then it goes to the board and they say, actually, we want to see it like this or we need to know the detail behind these numbers because this is different. And then we have to go back to the drawing board and reprocess all those numbers again to get a different yeah. story. Uh, so these, be, these are all the we, all been there yeah? yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so so what's the alternative so this is what self-serve bi is is really that kind of halfway house right between your traditional it kind of systems and um and excel right so you know the really governed secure single version of the truth in your in your systems but not flexible or agile versus excel completely flexible completely agile but you know those challenges around it and the idea of self serve bi is to is to sit in the middle um and the phrase i really like it's come from microsoft actually i, I didn't come up with it myself um mm -hmm. it's discipline at the core flexibility at the edge mm -hmm. that's what you really that's what you know self service bi is really about where you know it could have control over your data sources you could have have, you know standard chart of accounts you can have standard taxonomies um and you know data models and data flows and things like that that centralize it but uh, finance have the flexibility to produce their reports to to use that standardized logic in whichever way they need to present the numbers or to tell the story that they need to or to drive the value that they need to um or to, you know to drive things like machine learning models um and this is not all just power bi so again, this is kind of you know, Microsoft Finance example. So Microsoft have gone through this journey themselves in their own finance team. So mm -hmm. it's looking, you know, going from tables of data and where it's very hard to spot patterns and and you know you have to try and pull out all the key things to be able to allow people to identify those insights themselves and drill into the detail and understand what's driving the numbers. Um, and much less time is spent putting these together because it's automated. So mm -hmm. then you've got more time where you can spend on the analysis on on what to do about what the numbers are showing you rather than just getting the numbers together. 
Yeah. Um, and, you and, know, it, this... and, and what I always like mm -hmm. eh, when I show this for the first time to my customers, mm -hmm. the interactivity. Yeah, yep. because yep. Interactivity, Excel, yep. very static, of course. Mm -hmm. You can do some pivots and a little bit of slicing. Yeah, but it is no comparison to Power BI where you have full interaction. You can click on anything and the rest changes. I think mm -hmm. that's a big plus uh, in itself Absolutely. already. Absolutely. Yeah. And and yeah. the thing is, Power BI doesn't give you all of this. Right. The the idea no. is Power BI isn't a silver bullet as well. And I think that's that's one of the things. Yes, you, Power BI will help you go from this kind of table to to a visual view, and it will give you some of those insights. But mm -hmm. really, it's it's part of the whole ecosystem. Um, it's you know in Avanard we use we use one stream for example as a um, as a as an accounting system um, also Dynamics and Azure so it's it's all these kind of tools which allow you to go to have things like consistent taxonomies and, and on automation right you're not going to get all of this with Power BI it's it's understanding where Power BI fits into the wider journey but self service BI and moving you know advancing some of those reporting from just having your systems and doing export to Excel and doing all your analysis in Excel, moving to a self-serve BI is really, really important step on that journey. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's that's what's important to, to kind of cover. So a mm -hmm. um, few of you would have seen this already. So in the Power Platform Finance um, school that we're, course that we're doing, um, I've started, I put it on LinkedIn kind of a structure of how we're structuring those data sets and data flows. So the idea that actually you've got IT have set up, you know, or IT in, in our case, but IT have set up access to, you know, finance transaction systems and not just given the credentials to every finance user who wants to connect to it, but set them up as centralized data flows where it connects the finance system securely via a gateway, brings in the data into, into, into data flows. And this is actually stored in Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you've also got other data flows for exchange rates and filings. And then the finance user, the data modelers have access to these data flows. So they can build the data models. They build the logic, the finance logic in conjunction with finance SMEs, data modelers. And then they have these shared data sets. And then these shared data sets, other workspaces, other use cases could all connect to the same data, but they're all connecting to the single version of the truth. They're all connecting to the same logic, to the same data. It's not that I'm taking a, a snapshot at this point in time of the data and then it changes and then someone else takes another snapshot of the data and they're suddenly looking at different different reports, um, mm -hmm. different numbers and different calculations and all the rest of it. So the idea is to bring some of that governance, but you still have the flexibility around the different types of reports that you want. And, and is that flexibility maybe also over because you say certified eh, very specifically mm -hmm. uh, and i know that there is in in uh, eh, there's a way indeed to add labels eh, uh, to to this data sets mm -hmm. do you think there is also room in this picture to have data sets that are not fully certified yet or yeah maybe of course never will of course. be there to is, play around yeah. with eh, because oh absolutely yeah and this is right? where a yeah. lot of stuff starts right so you, you have different layers it's a maturity curve it's not yeah it's not yeah. a be all and end all it's not we're not saying if you if you want to use Power BI, this is how you have to use it. You have to have data flows and data sets. You have to do it all through here. But yeah. there comes a point where actually you could build some POC solutions, but then once they start to become widespread, or you know, once you once you know that you need this to be connected to to live to data systems and things like that, then you need to start thinking about the structures in place beyond yeah your own use case and i think that's you know one of the challenges right a lot of people are focused on their own use case and they say right i need this data build this report but there was someone else wants to do a similar type of analysis or do a similar type of things on the same data mm -hmm. you, you how can they not reinvent the wheel is really is really the question yeah. as well yeah yeah, I understand. Um, and, and all of this is based on governance, right? So access and things yep. like that. So, so that's yep. that's yep. what's there. And this is kind yep. of what alluded to what we were talking about before, that Power BI is a stepping stone on the journey. So, you know, it's it's Excel is your static reports. It's it's, it's what happened. Power BI really allows you to go into why did it happen? Um, you know, what 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 was what's the reasons? What's the story around the data? And then you've got things like machine learning about what will happen. Uh, what could you do about it? So there's, there's, it's, it's all of these things that you could drive. So in, in all of these areas. So it's not just about reporting the finance function and modernization. Power BI is a really important part of that, but it's not, it's mm -hmm. not a silver bullet for mm -hmm. the, for the entire 
finance modernization journey. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, this is, again, kind of why Power BI specifically. It's really because Microsoft are really at that top domain of ability to execute and complete this efficient. And for me, it's because, you know, this is why I've staked my career on Power BI, if you like. It's because, you know, it has the integrations with Excel, with Teams, with Synapse, with, you know, with Azure Dynamics, all of these things. And the reason is because it's not just a data visualization tool. Um, you know, it's it's part yeah. of that overall architecture platform and idea. So that's that's really what I wanted what, to get what, across. What, this what, 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 I, what I find interesting, and mm -hmm. I don't know whether you, you have the same opinion, but that Excel seems to be evolving also. Yeah. That, you, that you're using Power BI data sets. But then Excel, as someone was already mentioning, I think, uh, the data types. Uh, I love data types in Excel, Belinda said. Yeah, but you see, you know, also data types coming from Power BI, which we can do all kinds of, you know, cool things within Excel. Uh, so you see both evolving. Uh, it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the point, yeah. right? This is where then you have you start to use Power BI as your kind of way to build semantic data models, right? And then yeah. you could consume those in Excel. You could consume them in reports. You know, and yeah. you could build those data models, the source data. You can integrate it directly using things yeah. like Azure. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. And this is this is yeah. where this is where it is. So um what I wanted to go through next was kind mm -hmm. of then um the top kind of skills you need as a finance professional for Power BI. And there's I some of these are huge, right? So these aren't kind of some of these are not very quick things to pick up. Mm -hmm. Um um mm -hmm. and so yeah, let's let's go through some of these and we'll talk give examples and I'll show some ideas about about where to go for these. Yeah. So um, the first one, and I think this is something often underlooked, is capturing financial reporting requirements. So um, I tend to use things like a scoping template, and I've got a session actually that I did on SQL Bits a few months ago, and I, I emailed them yesterday, and they said they're actually they will um, they will bring it up um, they'll, they'll bring it up onto YouTube, but it goes through kind of how to how to capture requirements for a finance use case um, for, you know, asking, looking at the problem statements. It is an example of a template. So this is for, this is for LDI actually. Um, it's, you know, who's the audience? What's the area? What's the problem statements they have? So this really needs to be, again, one of the things I see a lot with reporting generally in Power BI is that people will try to make reports that are all things to all people. And they end up not being useful by anyone because they, they, yeah. uh, you need to have a very targeted audience, a very targeted set of problem statements. And then you identify those key questions. And again, what you don't necessarily need to do is go to your audience and say, what do you want to see? Do you want to see a line chart? Do you want to see a bar chart with this? Because it's your job as the BI analyst and professional to be able to work out how to tell the story, how to answer these questions for your report. Um, yeah. And you know which measures can you do this? What do you want to view and filter to buy, and and what's the data source? Yeah. So so and then it's, from here, and it's one it's uh, it's only a one pager. I think it's very helpful. Well, I mean, because, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but I mean per area, right? So yeah, if you have yeah. five pages yeah, okay. or that, you, yeah, can, you, can, you can have multiple ones. Yeah, you have yeah. it in a <laughs> you have it in a you have it as a nice reference uh, yeah. next, before yeah. you start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And then from here, you can go to storyboarding. Um, so you can then think about how to answer these questions with visuals and also mm -hmm. from data model design. So you can think yeah. about how to design your data model using yeah. things like StarNet so that you can actually um, yeah. uh, actually make sure the data model answer those questions. Yeah. And that fits um, nicely in the ne next one, indeed. And then, uh, the next one, which is the <laughs> yeah, idea of yeah. star schemas. Um, and actually, I did, this is, I, I think I actually opened up a slightly older version of this presentation because I actually put some links in here as well. Um, so there's an article from M on MS Docs um, remind mm -hmm. me afterwards, you and I'll send you all the links to all that. Yeah, I'll put it in the comments. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It's um, it, it's the importance, I think it's called The Importance of Star Schemas. It's written by Adam Saxton. So it's yeah. called The Importance of Star Schemas. Um, but cute. yeah, understanding yeah. understanding how they apply in a finance scenario. So yeah. where does your chart yeah. of accounts sit in? Um, do yeah. you need to bring in data at the transactional level or do you need to aggregate that up to yeah. you know general ledger? Oops, and, and, and I, I, I don't know whether the people who were watching uh, recognize this, but we give a lot of training, eh? and, and mm -hmm. often, the, 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 in general, eh, not only the finance people, but when we discuss the topic of data modeling, it's completely mm -hmm. new, and then, eh, okay, cr making graphs, that all makes perfect sense, but making a data model and understanding the concept of a data model, yeah. for a lot of people, that's, that's indeed... You have, to, eh? you have to invest some time in there the, before you yeah. uh, know yeah. the basics. 
and I always say, yeah, please do invest it because it's the core of uh, uh, making the best of uh, Power BI, I think. Absolutely. So do, do people who watch um, it recognize it? Is that the most, or one of the most, yeah, uh, key areas? So one of the things that, the 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 yeah, in general, a finance professional needs to do some extra effort for. To uh, huh? no hmm. yeah, yeah. Be good to hear what hear, so, hear people so this is, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, this is a data model. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've taken I've taken um. There's one of my one of my colleagues at work is a guy called Chris Barber. He's he's also a, a fi an accountant. He was actually an accountant only until about a year ago, and then he joined kind of Altius. I mean, obviously he was using Power BI before mm -hmm. that. But he he's already an MVP as well, so he's he's clearly very skilled in the space. Um, and he's yeah. he's been doing some presentations on income statement and balance sheets. Um, so yeah. for example, in building out um, building out something like this. So mm -hmm. um. Oh, I'm not sure why this is taking a while to load, but we've yeah, got that the income sure. statement, a properly formatted income statement, and then we've got the income statement bridge to show the variances. So, like the kind of things you'd show in a waterfall chart, um, mm -hmm. we've got those here as well. So, you know, how do you get your nice formatted income statements? Um, and the trick behind this is to have the right data model. So, you need to have some tables in your data that have all of these lines, regardless of whether these are charted for count lines or not. So, that's what we've got in here. Um, and this is one of the tips, actually. So I'm, I'm kind of yeah. ruining a little bit here, but <laughs> we've got, you know, level one, level two, level three, level four, the order. What type of calculation is it? So we even have our blank lines, our, our, our you know, um, split lines in here. And yeah. then some of these are just going to be sums from the chart of accounts. So we can create a relationship between here to to the chart of accounts and it will then pull out all of our data for those sum of transactions for those basically yeah. uh, but yeah. we might have some custom calculations in here we might have some blank lines in here that we just want to format in a different way so how that comes in here so we've got then financial statement layouts and they go into um uh, they go into your uh, into your transactions table through there so this is and then you've got your date table for example which is ties into your budget ties into your transactions so you know, lots of things we can do. And then thinking about yeah. how to structure that data model. So for the balance sheet, perhaps we want this periodic snapshot table. So it's a different grain of data. So this is mm -hmm. these these are the kind of things we need to think about when designing a finance data model. What if yeah. we just take all of our transactional data, chuck it in there, and then link tables together with it, we might end up with a bit of a mess, especially once we've got data of different grains. So our yeah. budget data, for example, might not be at the same grain as our transactions because we might not budget at that level of granularity, right? We might not be able to say every single product for yeah. every single date, what we think we're gonna no. sell. We might just say, in March, we'll sell 200 bikes, you know? B budget budgeting is already uh, hard enough. Let's not make yeah, it more. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. but but those those are then important things because then we think about actually we've got different grains of data now for our transactional to our budget. How do we yeah. make sure that they tie in together? So these are all the things we need to think about with with, with data modeling um, yeah. and you know yeah. things like metadata tables. So to make things metadata driven as far as possible. Is, yeah. is really important so yeah i need the skill set to to have a knowledge about how do you create these data models and what is mm -hmm. the star schema that's indeed crucial uh yeah. oriana uh she has a nice tip uh Step zebra bi, BI. yeah yeah, yeah we, we we did i think a session on that uh three months ago i believe mm -hmm. the, i think it was the first session of this year indeed uh, that we did that we okay. also talked the whole session about zebra bi and what you can do with it in Dutch. Cool. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Andre, <laughs> you can see, you can see, you can see the examples. Yeah. No, okay. not Andre. Uh, <laughs> not Andre. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll invite Andre uh, one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you should absolutely. Yeah, he's I the, mean, he's I, the, I, the, I the, the the director founder of uh, of it's Zebra BI yeah. Indeed. Yeah, 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 that will be fun. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so then we've got how to connect to finance systems and do it in things and connect and just clean that data in an automated and consistent way, right? Yeah. So that's what we're talking about with things like data flows, um, yeah. and you know it, it's automated through there. Yeah, um, I have one question from Matthew yeah. uh, Rishi yeah. that I want to. Uh, uh, so he says, do these tables, uh, so this this structure table you showed, for example, cover the Power BI dashboard, or is it more of a control view? to see what links what what what, what was the uh, yeah it's, it, it actually controls it right so it's a it's a the these fields here if you see they're actually coming from um they yeah. come from that metadata table yeah so there's a text box over here um 
but yeah, these mm-hmm. fields essentially come from the metadata table, and then yeah, the measure, including the blanks, the, indeed, including, including the lines, the blanks, also including the lines. Yep, absolutely. Ah, and then, nice. and then you've then you've got kind of a switch statement, or you could use calculation groups that basically say, okay, look at what's been selected here. If this is just if look at this line, what what are the attributes of that line? Okay, well that operated revenue, that's one of our chart of account lines, right? So all yeah. we need to do is just sum our transactions where the chart of account line is operated revenue done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Some of them here might be actually our um this is a running total, right? So we don't have a line for gross profit. Gross profit is not a chart of account line, it's a calculation. Yeah. Um, so we okay. so it looks at here and says it's a running total, and then it says, right, I know how to do a running total because in your switch statement in DAX or in your calculation item, it says, yep, I know how to do a running total. Let me go here and apply the running total logic to it. So um, yeah. it, it does that. So so it helps to drive it rather than, and it, you know, it makes your DAX splits out your DAX into logic, but it, it, it you know unless you have the foresight to know that you need a table like this, you, mm-hmm. this is what I'm saying. You could potentially end up in in quite a mess. Yeah, and 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 you, so you can change the structure if needed, mm-hmm. and it will oh, yeah, then be absolutely. automatically yeah. applied. Uh, yeah, as a yeah new or you might you might have different yeah. business units that have different layouts that have different yeah. things they want yeah, to show yeah, and yeah. different calculations. So in fact, you can yeah. you, by driving yeah. it in a metadata driven way, you could then start to just have a slicer that says, actually, I want to see a business level yeah. view in this income statement, or I want to see yeah. a different yeah. type of view, and all yeah. it is is a slicer to filter out a different set of rows in here. Yeah. Now maybe that comes back on the second page uh, because these are the the first three. So let's move with yep. number four. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm conscious of time, wasn't it? We're, we're, no we're talking quite a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, um, that's okay. No problem. So how to like build it. a data model with an appropriate level of granularity and relationships? So that's what we were talking about with things like budget and forecast as well. Um, how to deal with hierarchies um, and and slowly change dimensions where these are not dealt with a source. So slowly change dimensions is the idea. So it, to give you the example, we've got you could actually chart of accounts is also an example um, because you know one account might map to something in one period, but actually periods later that account number means something yeah. else. Or you know yeah. you might have customers who the, the example we're using in PPF is where it says actually legal services company. So we have different rates for different size customers. But that size yeah. is not static. A company might be small one year and medium the next. So you know yeah. we, we need to look at how we deal with those kind of changes in that in that yeah. attributes. How yeah. to write DAX measures rather than just calculate a column. So for things like financial me- uh, financial ratios and things like that, when I started first learning DAX, I did everything in calculator columns because it was just the most obvious coming from Excel, um, you know, to, to do it row by row and you can see exactly what's happening. Yeah. Um, but the challenge with that is you, you lose the flexibility and you lose, you know, it's, it's performance wise and it, you can't really do the same calculations step by step, right? It's these are do, pivot do you typic- Do you typically use... M also power query for adding uh, columns maybe sometimes. Yeah, okay. to a degree. I mean, I, I do some of the yeah, some of the calculations in there. Um, yeah. But I mean, the ratios and things like that. Really, that's yeah. that's where DAX measures yeah, shine. That is right? DAX. That's, yeah. that's what they're yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for showing your you know cost income ratios and things like that. You yeah. know, that's you 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 just define that once, and you can't define something like that really row by row because it depends what you're looking at. Are you talking yeah. about the cost income ratio for a particular business unit or for yeah. you know a particular subset of costs even? And so, I think so, e- yeah. even more than the data model, DAX for the typical finance professional is mm-hmm. even costs a little bit more time even to uh, to understand. Yeah, Do you think? yeah, and I, I think you need to keep it simple, right? I think that's yeah. that's, that's, that's always a good advice. That's <laughs> keep it keep it simple. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, yeah. I, I do like using things like even as I'm saying in, in PPF, we're going to do things like use calculation groups and things, even though that's technically more advanced it helps to kind of split stuff out, right? Yeah, it almost sits in yeah. a different layer. So you're starting to to, to put things in, in its place. Yeah, I, I like uh, I, earlier this year also someone who uh, had a very nice session and he, he said, if you have to write very difficult DAX formulas, you should make your, should change something in your data model to make yeah. it that you only need simple DAX queries. You know, I, I, yeah. I remember that. I think, yeah, there's some, some truth in there indeed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. using time intelligence. Right. Yeah. So um that's the next one. So here we can see we've got current period, quarter to date, year to date. So again, mm-hmm. it's just a slicer. Um, mm-hmm. and I've got an example um 
that, that you could go through. So um, I, I'll put a link to it in the chat maybe, um, where it just goes through kind of how to set these up. Again, you can just do them by saying, you know, a slicer or calculation group and say, actually, I just want to see all these numbers. It's current month, quarter to date, year to date. So in Excel, yeah. you'd have to do these all as separate tables and depth of calculations, whereas yeah. here you just define the logic and then depending on what you've selected, it will show them that way. And it's just yeah. you use time intelligence because you can use functions like dates MTD, um, dates QTD, dates YTD, and actually it will know it, the, the context the context you're in. It knows what time is. It knows what month you're in. So it knows how to work out month to date, year to date, quarter to date based on that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really handy. The metadata tables to build the statements. That's what we talked about. And using the conditional logic to yeah. to kind of say what what type of calc what type of row is this and what kind yeah. of what do I need to do? Yeah, with it? Unfortunately, we can't go with full detail for every no. uh, thing, but yeah. it's good to know a little bit where you can Google on, <laughs> yeah, and and, uh, and and some of these topics we already discussed in past uh, episodes, also like calculation group, for example. Yeah, brilliant. Tell a story. I think that's also a very key to one indeed. So eh? yeah, again, this is this is a big one, right? So yeah. I was yeah. I, I was thinking of splitting this into a, into a couple, mm. but then I thought it'd just mm -hmm. get too much. So I'm going to keep it as one, but it is there's a lot there because again, yeah. what you don't want to be doing is just putting visuals on for the sake of making it look pretty. And and people do this as well with color a lot. You know, let let me let me try and put lots of different colors on because otherwise the report looks boring. But yeah. I guess it's really about actually what it what are the, it comes back to those business questions, right? What are the questions you're trying to answer, and mm. then what what visualizations will help you to answer those questions um so you, the idea is someone could look at it and say yep i know i know what's there and then if you have the detail you could drill through so this is where things like drill through comes in or tool tips to give them more context or information about it um so once yeah. you start designing these reports then those reports could be used and they'll be refreshed with new data and finance data so those reports can then start to drive insights by themselves and this is again the promise of self serve bi Right, you don't have to produce those cuts and those views every single time. Yeah. Um, if you, if you do this right, um, then we've got this idea about custom visuals and third-party tools. So, yep, yeah, Zebra BI is a great example. Um, there's also things like Power on BI, Actuist, Valq, a few of those companies. So, if you go onto PowerPlatformFinance.com, they've all done webinars on this um, for for the PPF community. So, again, it's worth mm -hmm. checking those out. Um, and you know, I think it's 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 once you've got Power BI to a certain level of usage, and there's there's gaps. As I say, Power BI is going to do everything, but actually, what it could go a lot further with some of these add-ons. Did you um, also look at our Dutch uh, proud uh, Dutch pride uh, Nova Silva? One one of our trainers, Michel, is uh, running that. No? No, so it's very nice. They're very cool uh, custom visuals. Uh, so, oh, okay, uh, cool. Oh, check it out. They, yeah, they, 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 they have been in the in the Power BI update, uh, the monthly update, uh, the, the mm -hmm. blog of Power BI. They mm -hmm. have been listed in the last four or five months, every month now, as uh, yeah. with their custom visuals. So it's very cool. They Brilliant. make it very Brilliant. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are some really nice visuals in here, actually. Um, so again, I mean, yeah. to be honest, I haven't looked at all of these in that much detail as well. Yeah. So I need yeah. to, yeah. I need yeah. to yeah. do it. Um, yeah. And then we've got things about how to integrate with a broader Power Platform. So, you know, things like Power Apps and Power Automate, where it can start to do things like period end workflows or commentary yeah. and adjustments and things like that. Um, yeah. And then also things like Azure. So actually, you know, what you don't want is all of your data coming off Excel spreadsheets, right? So, you know, yeah. you really want to be able to then tie in your systems and, you know, retain that integrity and start to think about governance and access and, and things like that. So, yeah. you know, Azure, that's where Azure really comes into play yeah. as well as well, yeah, but what, what, what Fernando, uh, I think, rightfully uh, puts, yeah. yeah, this covers indeed uh, all the possibilities of Power BI and comes back to what you said now, what you have stated here also as first line. <laughs> it's more than yeah. a data visualization uh, tool. Hey? Yeah. So indeed, yeah. all these elements, these skill sets uh, yeah. you just uh, said, yeah, then you will make the most use of, uh, of Power BI. Uh, Sardis, I don't know what you mean by PH. Do you know, uh, Rishi? I'm not sure. Sorry, it's maybe. Maybe you can uh, uh, indicate Sardis what you mean by that. Uh, yeah, please. And we'll try to answer it. So just for the last couple of minutes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about PPF and where, sure. where we've kind yeah. of come on with this journey, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, yeah, um, so basically PPF kind of, yes, yeah, I say I started it a couple of years ago. It's actually started as Power User Days Finance. Um, so we held in 2019, um, held a conference and a workshop session um, with about 60, 70 people um, in London. Um, 
and yeah, they were they were really good, and I really saw that there was a lot of interest in this kind of space. Um, obviously, then COVID hit as well, and you know we, those those face to face events stopped happening, um, and so you know quite quickly we kind of saw actually, and we wanted to reach out to a broader audience as well, uh, rather than just the people yeah. who could attend a conference in London. So we um, we started holding webinars virtually. And, um, you know, we've got, we ran 17 last year. So covering everything from Dynamics 365. So people at Belinda did one. Um, we've got Power Automate, Power Apps and financial modeling. So I think people like Bob Duffy did some and Chris Barber, who I've referred to in here, has done some sessions as well. So it's some really, really good sessions. And these were really, really kind of eye-opening, I think, even, you know, for me as well, right? I've, I've done a fair bit of Power BI, but actually I, I've, one of the first times I saw Dynamics and, you know, I wasn't aware of a lot of these add-ons and things like that as well that you could really do. Yeah. So it's really, really useful. Um, and it's, as I say, it kind of shows a lot of the art of the possible. And, you know, we've had 700 people so far who've kind of viewed at least, so cool. who've, who've registered for at least one and over 6,000 views of the YouTube videos. Um, and I think one of the things kind of at the end of last year that I was kind of thinking, of, like, this is all great, but there's just so much content. And actually what's really missing now is that kind of hands-on experience, the hands-on kind of, you know, like we used to have in classrooms where we'd sit there and it's a teacher going through stuff. But we don't we don't have that anymore. And it's it's very hard to do with hundreds of people. On a, on a call or even mm -hmm. dozens of people on a call it's, it's quite hard to do so what mm -hmm. we're doing this year is where where we want to come up with a solid base of material because as you can see there's a lot to this right even yeah. just to look at power behind finances all of those areas so basically those basically those 12 areas those 12 topics or 12 skills are essentially uh, are chapters of a, of a book or a course that we're kind of putting together through, yeah. through PPS school. Um, so yeah. we're going to run these over kind of a period of six months or so, um, work through them, get some feedback, you know, start to start to start to build out the material. And then once we've done that with a small group of people, so only about 10 people or so, um, we'll then go out and make that material available more broadly um, through videos, books, all the rest of the stuff. So that we have that solid base of knowledge nice. um, in, in, in order to build them. Um, and and, and uh, uh, when, when will that uh, start? Uh, when is the first uh, um, So I've, put, I've, uh, I've said second of May we'll have an intro. We kind of kick it off oh. at the beginning, middle May, cool. mid, mid May, oh, sixteenth okay. of May oh, or it's something. All, so it's already close. It's, and it's, it's already, already full. Close, you, yeah. uh, it's already full. Uh, it's already. Yeah, close, we've uh, had we've had, but... we've had ten people yeah. or so. Um, yeah, to, to kind of you know, so it's a really it's a really nice. great quite a few people I've seen on this call. So we've yeah. had a few people um, just need to kind of confirm they will yeah. they were able to do it and. Um, and then yeah, I, I think from there we'll it'll be it'll be it'll be quite good. We'll see how it goes. I haven't I haven't Fernando, tried. Uh, Fernando Fernando likes it. Good, good. He would, he, would, so. he, would, he, would, he would have been there uh, preferably live, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe in the future, good, Fernando. And well, uh, Sardis, yeah, thank you for. Fernando, how, about, how about you invite me to Mexico then? How about that? Yeah, <laughs> then we can do the route. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Sardis, thank you for uh, further explaining your questions. So Python, I, I thought already it might be Python. Uh, really, oh, Python, really. right? So, yeah. uh, what role plays Python on this type mm -hmm. of reporting? Yeah, that's um, a good question. I, 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 it came up in the session earlier today with my, uh, with a customer of mine also. Sure. Yeah, what do you think? So What's I, your? Uh... Yeah. So, so I think, I think there's definitely areas where where it could be used right i think with python it's one of those things where you know you could learn you could it's great language to learn and it's so applicable and so broad and the things that you could do with it but also as a finance professional i think if you if you haven't mastered data modeling dax uh, you know power query all of those kind of things and visualization you know those will keep you busy for years on end and actually mm. mastering some of those things will probably get you further in your finance journey than learning something like python now because... let, 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 let me uh, put on the yeah. table the case yeah. that we uh, were asked by mm -hmm. a customer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and they asked we want to do forecasting yeah we want to do exactly. forecasting exactly. yeah yeah then i think okay maybe a regression model in a tool like in a language like python maybe yeah, yeah but i suppose the, the question is there then you know do you have some data scientists who are going to be able to build it so with yeah. for doing things yeah, like true. forecasting so actually actually you know these some of these add-ons i was talking about like um power on bi and actors values a lot of those have integrations with things like that as well mm -hmm. so you can write your own scripts to do things and mm -hmm. obviously where you've got specific use cases for it so so uh, to give to people a bit of background r and python you could use in three main ways in power bi so you can either 
con rather than connecting to data, you can connect to an R script or a Python script. Um, mm -hmm. The only challenge with that is you need a gateway to then kind of refresh those. Um, and uh, or the other option is when you have um, R or Python, you can you could use connect to your data, the database or files, and then in the query editor, you could run little bits of R and Python scripts. So you know mm -hmm. if you wanted to run regex or something like that, that's not a feature in in M. You can you can do it in Python, for example, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or what you could do is load your data model as normal and then use an R or Python visual to be able to do that. Now, yeah. so for those specific use cases, absolutely, right? But those yeah. are very specific use cases. And actually, they're probably, yeah. you know, a bit more niche and a little bit more down the line yeah. compared to stuff like M and DAX data modeling yeah. and even the stuff on the governance stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. for a finance professional, yeah, I think it, it really depends on if you need it for those use cases, but also, you know, Yes, you could do it for forecasting and things like that, but to, it's going to take you a while to really get to that point where you yeah. could you build. That's inter it's it's it, that. it interesting because I, I think in, in four or five weeks' time, I think mm -hmm. actual Python expert and trainer, oh, yeah. etc. Right. So okay. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a short clip of this mm -hmm. and then I put that in that session and then I'm ask, <laughs> ask him his reaction. Yeah, yeah. Sure, let's have a discussion. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, really, but I wonder like what that. he will I, I say. Mean, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's just yeah, where it where yeah. it comes in. So, uh, Sardis, thank you for that information, uh, because yeah, yeah, is it worthwhile the investment? Now I hear you say me maybe not the first at least. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. first. I mean, it also RBI, depends on, yeah. on personal preference and where you want to go with, you know, course, with, with yeah. your career and stuff as well. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's a big area, right? Data, data. And this is why Microsoft, what they've really done is said, do you know what? Not everyone's going to sit there and take that time and investment to be a data scientist. And we don't have enough data scientists to do it. So what mm -hmm. they've done is actually brought a lot of that into Power BI itself. Mm -hmm. So you can run you know, pre-built data models, regression models on your data in things like data yeah. flows or in your using, even, even in visuals, right? So key influencers yeah. and decomposition yeah. tree actually yeah. use yeah. AI behind the scenes, but it's abstracted yeah. away from you. Now, I know some companies won't like that because they're like, no, 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 I need to see what's happening behind the scene. I can't have a black box yeah. that's yeah. doing this, yeah. but it's, it's getting that balance. So I, I think so too. I, I And I think that it will be more and more. Mm. And because also now with the premium per user uh, yeah. license model yeah. that you even have that more capabilities option. for only $10 uh, per month more, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which I think is an uh, excellent price. Uh, yeah, of course, there are downsides to it because if you build something in it, everyone who views it also needs to have this license, okay? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, besides of that, I think it's, it's nice that it is accessible for more people. So, uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, Fernando just, gives kind of uh, the advice. Maybe yeah. the eight hundred uh, first. Indeed. Oh, sorry. I was. Yeah. I will yeah. add your screen again. Yeah. Yeah. So this sure. is the team. Yeah. Yeah, it's the team. Yeah. So it's not just me. I've tried yeah. to bring some other people in to to help with the kind yeah. of building up of the stuff of the Power Platform Finance. So Chris yeah. is who I've referred to before. Um, Alps also in Avenard in the US. Kyle's not Avenard, um, but he's um. He's, he's in the US as well. And then Rajan's Avnaj UK now as well. He was KPMG and then he's we, we stole him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice, uh, nice, nice team to put together. Yeah, yeah cool. and then um, just in terms of, you know, if you want to get involved with, with PPF. So for now, obviously, as I say, we're, we're building up material. That's, that's our plan. Uh, we will absolutely yeah. make that material um, more broadly accessible but there's you know check out the youtube channel check out the webinars if you haven't already um yeah. and also you know for this material that we're coming up with you know i'm conscious that you know this is why i wanted to get a team in place rather than make it just me um you know we don't know all the answers we don't know all the kind of scenarios that people want to use these kind of things for so as much input we can get from people as possible please please let me know just yeah. reach out to an email drop me a note and you know i will i will look at it and get back to you um and yeah keep stay tuned we've got, I'll, we've got I'll, I will probably e I will probably email you also in the future sure. because yeah, I think you know it's it's so it's so uh dynamic this uh, power platform eh? the, mm -hmm. uh, new things are being added every week uh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, question, this just came out yesterday what do you think about it oh god what <laughs> I haven't, oh, I, I oh, the, the I, people ask you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> I didn't have time yet to check it. Uh, exactly, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Problem. So, um, uh, oh, you already did uh, the DA100. Uh, do, do you think that people, that the finance professionals should do the DA100 certificate? So Boys. yeah, yeah, no, I think DA100 is yeah. great. Um, yeah. So, uh, and as I said, the other, the other site that I've got, LearnDataInsights.com, 
is um is around helping people pass the yeah, certification yeah, exactly. yeah, um, yeah. and what i've done with there is actually there's been every quiz that people do um i've captured all the data for so every question whether they've got it right or wrong and across all 55,000 quiz attempts so i've captured all of that data put it into a database and built a power bi report on top of it cool. and i'm embedding that back into the site so the idea is you can start to see where people where where, where, in where did area. in what area did people make the most mistakes and yeah do, exactly where's do you, where, do you know where, by heart where where, where, what area um, do they have the most difficulty with no actually to be honest it's, it's actually not? fairly consistent actually yeah oh um okay. yeah yeah i said the report i mean it's not it's not one specific area that stands out actually it wasn't um oh, okay. so okay. so i mean I, I guess if you look over a broad enough audience right so yeah yeah, <laughs> every, yeah. Every, everything it's, everything it's levels it's out efforts. yeah yeah <laughs> it's, exactly. statistics isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it's um, the, the rule the rule of big numbers absolutely. yeah so uh no great um thank you very much um, uh, yeah I definitely uh, advise uh, people to check it out and uh, uh have a look i really love the way you are sharing all this knowledge and uh sure. yeah, i appreciate yeah, that and, and uh yeah you're welcome Marisha. thank you and uh, uh thank you all for the people who watched also I think it was the most international crowd we have uh, had right. until now. Yeah. So yeah, that absolutely. was also quite an uh, quite an experience for us. So uh, thank you for that and uh, yeah. making this a fun session. And um, next week we're back, but then in Dutch. So wow. if you want to learn Dutch, you can uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all done will, to me, you mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, maybe, maybe if people are watching and you think, hey, I have also something interesting uh, to show about Power BI or Power Apps or Automate, free, uh, feel free to contact me. Hey, I'm on uh, LinkedIn also uh, very frequently and sharing uh, uh, content with Power BI. So um, uh, let me know. I, I, I would be happy to have some uh some in, more international uh, guests. So Fernando, eh, if you want to do it, uh, uh, yeah, you, in English then, eh? <laughs> uh, feel free. Uh, if you have something nice to uh, to tell. Uh, and next uh, next week we have uh, yeah what we call Design Donderdag. That's uh, uh, first day, Design first day. But yeah, that doesn't sound as well as Design Donderdag, of course. But uh, we do that every month. Uh, with, uh, we kind of discuss some dashboards that people send us, and we kind of say, uh, okay, this is what we like. This maybe can be better from a design perspective. And so your uh, what was it? Your uh, uh, skill number ten. We yeah. gonna be discussing then and, and see if people uh, yeah, can learn from that. So right. thank you all for watching. Thank you again, Rishi, for your time. Thank you. So you really about appreciate about it. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, and uh, yeah, see you uh, next week and uh, have a nice uh, evening all. <laughs> bye bye. See you soon. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. bye.